almost every financial solution exists to solve a problem. And I think the same is true for infinite banking. The question for today is what problem does infinite banking actually solve? I'm Nate. I make sense out of money. This is Dollars and Nonsense. If you follow the herd, you will be slaughtered. As I said in the intro, infinite banking is fundamentally about solving a problem. The issue I find is that most people don't know what problem it solves in general. (laughs) And on top of that, most agents present infinite banking as solving like a million problems. They position whole life insurance as like, essentially, if you have a financial problem, more insurance is what'll do it, is what'll solve the problem for you. And I actually believe there's an element of truth to this. There certainly is an element of truth to this. But I think for, for someone like me, I'm a huge big picture guy. If I don't understand the big picture, if I don't understand what problem we're really here to solve, then talking about the details is a complete waste of time. And I believe that that can be the case for infinite banking too. And that's what I want to delve in today. Because I do believe infinite banking is fundamentally about solving a problem. Most people don't really know what problem it solves. In fact, they're not even seeing it in that light. They just think of it as, you know, a great place to put some money because it's tax free. It grows well. It's got a death benefit. And they get, they get sold a policy based on the value of the policy, not the end of the world, but it would be more important. I think people would be more encouraged to understand that infinite banking actually solves problems in the world. And uh, the, the, the more you have the problems that it solves, the more likely you'll be compelled to do it. And here is essentially the problem that infinite banking sets out to solve. The problem is that banks have created a monopoly on money and they're making a killing off of their depositors and they're making a killing off of their borrowers. And the issue for you and I is that no matter what we do, we're always in one of those chairs, whether it's in the borrower's chair or the depositor chair, right? And this is essentially the problem. When you read Nelson Nash's book, who, who coined the term infinite banking, he wrote the book called Becoming Your Own Banker. And that was the start of this whole movement was founded upon Nelson Nash. You have to read it a few times to get everything that he says. You can't just read it one time and be like, oh yeah, I understand it. No way. I've read it like 50 times, maybe even more than that. I don't know how many times I've read it, but it's been a lot. And the more you read it, the more you get this idea that the problem is that banks are making a lot of money off something that you don't have to be using them for. (laughs) And you can create your own system of banking where you're not sitting in a bank's depositor chair or their borrower chair, but you've actually just gotten rid of them altogether and you're kind of in a new banking economy that profits only you. And he talks about that in great detail and then offers examples of how that works in, in reality. And so the the biggest problem infinite banking sets out to solve is that the banking world is not generous to its customers in the grand scheme of things. Banking is an awesome tool to use, by the way. You're always going to need some sort of checking account, at least in today's environment, some sort of uh, place for operating capital, I call it. Uh, You're going to need a place you know, for your own personal life, for your business life. The same thing goes for borrowing money from banks. I'm not opposed to borrowing money from banks at all. I don't think that's the problem. But the problem that for most of us is that we only know how to sit in the depositor chair or the borrower chair at somebody else's bank, they may give us some interest. Like right now you can get a little bit of interest at the bank, but for the last 15 years, it's been non-existent where we are essentially offering them our money for free and they're out there lending it back to us and to other people at a huge margin and they just get to keep it all. And we say, that's fine. That's not fine. It doesn't have to be that way. And in fact, here comes whole life insurance and the infinite banking concept that can help solve this problem. The problem that banking does not make me any money, that if I'm a depositor at the bank, I get a very small amount of interest earned. And if I'm a borrower from the bank, I'm paying them interest. The only way to historically get out of it before infinite banking goes was essentially just to say, you got to go invest your money, which at the very least, it means when you invest money, you're now accepting risk in, in, in hope for a return, right? So as soon as you take the money out of the banking world to try to solve this problem that banking sucks, like everyone knows banking sucks. <laughs> and so whenever infinite banking comes in and says, hey, we have a profitable banking solution, it really should get more attention than it, than it does. It's getting a ton of attention, but it should get even more than it does because we're essentially saying, hey, there's a way that in high interest rates and in low interest rate times, you can benefit from the process of banking through dividend and paying whole life insurance and becoming your own banker. But on the flip side, it used to be that people were like, hey, banking sucks. And the only way I know to get out of it is if I take my money out of banking and go invest it someplace else. Of course, they know that I'm going to have to accept some risk to do this. I take on a brand new risk of losing my money. And at the very minimum, you accept that you're going to lose your access to capital in a lot of ways. So I'm going to go put my money in some other place. And the value of that, it may be locked up if it's a certain type of assets, very illiquid assets in a lot of ways. You may be transitioning money from a nice powerful position of liquidity into a position of non-liquidity, 
by investing in something that's not quite liquid. Or you may go to kind of the, the brokerage house, the Wall Streets of the world. And you put money in there and you know there may be some fees to get it. There may be some taxes. It may be kind of liquid, but you also don't know, of course, what if you actually needed a liquidity in the event of a liquidity crisis, how much money is actually going to be in there? <laughs> and that's one of the unintended consequences of just saying, hey, banking sucks. So I'm going to invest all my money. And unintended consequences that as soon as there's a liquidity crisis, that's when you find yourself in bankruptcy. And if your money's tied up or is in you know, assets that can go up and down. So at the very minimum, you know, whenever you start to reduce your liquidity, you start to reduce your, your ability to take on new opportunities since your money's tied up elsewhere. You take on the, ability, the, the requirement to take on risk at all times on all of your money. Banking sucks, so I got to take my money out of banking, put it at risk in investments, hope that they do well, hope I don't have any personal liquidity crises or business liquidity crises coming along the way because I'm going to go stuff it all in assets. And uh, that may raise or fall in value. And all I'm saying is this this has a whole string of unintended consequences. And this is where infinite banking starts from. It starts from this perspective. Is there any way that we can become our own banker and profit like an owner of the bank instead of a depositor of the bank and start earning competitive growth on capital while also never giving up the liquidity of the capital itself? And along comes dividend paying whole life insurance policies issued by mutual companies, especially if you're designing them to maximize cash value, and you realize that it becomes a very attractive solution to this problem. And to top it all off, it, all of that banking mechanism is growing inside the policies in a tax-free environment, and you suddenly have to realize to yourself, there might be an answer that instead of going the, the typical route, the, the route that we had to go when banking sucks, I can actually make banking good again by becoming my own banker using dividend paying whole life insurance issued by mutual companies designed for high cash value. If you don't have a desire to do things that actually need you to have capital available, and you're just kind of an, a normal person who's in, and in fact, also on top of that, you're enjoying your stock market style, retirement program style investments, then your, your banking problem is minimal. So you're going to hear about infinite banking and it won't be quite as compelling to you right off the bat and maybe it shouldn't be at all, but it won't be quite as compelling to you right off the bat as if the same message was preached to someone who understood and has a true need for a high capital. That would be like, like a business owner or an entrepreneur or an active investor who's got, you know, a lot of is, is actively funding deals and has a large amount of cash flow. Those people will hear that there's this new solution to really become your own banker and start making a lot more money than typical banking strategies would allow you to be able to do with the same types of cash flow management you're already doing, just changing from bank accounts focused into policy focused, they see their banking problem more acutely because it's larger than somebody else's and they will hear about the message of infinite banking and be immediately compelled. Whereas somebody else, may, they may hear me super compelled by it, but they, they may, they're, they're, the problem that we're solving for uh, a W2 person that doesn't really want to operate with entrepreneurial, you know, investing opportunities, they may just not be quite as compelled. At least they may not be compelled about solving this big problem. So I'm as I'm trying to say, a lot of people can just enjoy the value of a whole life insurance policy. I believe they're very, very valuable. You don't need to go start a policy and become the the next, you know, Donald Trump real estate investor, you know, flashy guy to enjoy infinite banking. You can just enjoy paying premiums, building capital and having this huge, you know, warehouse of wealth that's very secure, growing tax free. That's totally fine for the value of whole life insurance. But what I'm trying to bring up is that the more people understand and desire to be capital rich, liquidity rich, then they understand that their need to become their own banker and profit from that becomes huge. This is the big problem that Infinite Banking, IBC, and Nelson Nash tried to solve. However, when you start practicing IBC, many people run into problems building out their banking system. And almost all of them are psychological problems. <laughs> I've beaten these to death. I'm probably going to beat them to death again today. But, the, you know, you set out to become your own banker, but while you're doing that, you're still gripped with fears that hold you back from proper execution. So you understand the problem it's solving, you want to solve it, but then you're, you're venturing into this new world a new world with new terms. We have premium payments. That sounds scary. We have loans and loan repayments. Those sound a bit scary. And you may learn about them and you get, you get comfortable enough with them to do a little bit, but there's some fears there, psychological problems, the fear of premium, which I've talked about many, many times. Uh, can come into play. And so they essentially what they end up doing is they start one policy and they think, because I have my one policy, I'm doing that IBC thing. I'm doing the, I've become my own banker now. 
with this one policy. And that's not necessarily true, folks. Not everyone who owns whole life insurance is practicing IBC, right? Are you tired of feeling like everyone has their hand in your pocket? At Living Wealth, we believe in challenging the status quo. After all, most of those conventional tools only seem to make someone else rich. Let us show you how to take back control by banking on yourself. Visit livingwealth.com slash escape the bank. You'll receive instant access to what we call the beginner's course. This free, in-depth, easy-to-follow course teaches people how to create and profit from infinite banking. We not only discuss the philosophy and principles behind infinite banking, but also offer real-life examples to demonstrate how it works. Even folks experienced with infinite banking often tell us they learned a ton, too. So, it's worthwhile regardless of your experience level. Stop letting banks and Wall Street dictate your financial future. Again, that's livingwealth.com slash escape the bank to gain access to the free course today. Now back to Nate and Holly. Not everyone who owns a life insurance is practicing IBC. Most of the people who own whole life insurance policies never even heard the, the term IBC before. They're not even like we are a minority still, this IBC practitioners in the world of whole life insurance sales. So not everyone who owns whole life insurance is practicing IBC. Just because you bought a policy, even with the intention to practice infinite banking, doesn't mean you're actually doing it by the fact that you own this one policy. And I brought this up in the four stages of IBC commitment webinar that I've done. I've also done a couple podcasts on this topic, what I call the four stages of IBC. It reveals this better than anything else in the world, that if you started a policy, but you started like in stage one, which we call the saver stage of life, the stage one life, you haven't exactly become your own banker. You've purchased a whole life insurance policy and you're enjoying the characteristics of the policy, but not to truly bank with it. And the re- and so here's the idea that kind of comes about that if you don't start policies with a high enough ceiling for premium payments, you always shortchange yourself and your wealth building potential in the infinite banking world. The reality is people said, oh, okay, I'm going to solve this problem, but then they just, and I don't, I don't mean to be you know offensive in this, and, and it's not always the case, but a lot of times people are just a little bit nervous, a little, and you should start small, and you should get your feet wet, but you can't think that I have my one policy, it's the one I started three years ago, and I'm doing this thing. If really you're just in the saver stage, you're, you, you have a good start, but you need to grow within the system. So if you don't start policy with a high enough ceiling for premium payments, then you'll just be putting in a small piece of your overall financial puzzle and your most of your money is still going to flow into banks and be invested from there. And you've got all these other pools of capital and your policy is just kind of a little side thing. And maybe you'll pull from it. Maybe you won't, right? You're, you're in stage one of life. So the idea is that most people who hear about IBC, they're a business owner. They have big financial problems to solve or they're active investors and they've got a lot of money flowing through. Those are the ones who oftentimes understand and are very compelled by what IBC is solving, which is a better banking solution for the rest of their life to help them build wealth because they have a lot of money flowing in and out of banks right now. Banking is a huge piece of what they're doing. They're going to hear the message and be super compelled and they're the ones who are likely going to start larger policies that that fit more like a stage two, stage three life very early on because they're like, I got big problems to solve here. Whereas somebody who is typical, just kind of you know working, saving some money, things like that, they may start in stage one or stage two. And that's totally fine. I love it, by the way. I love it. You should start wherever you're at. You should go with whatever you're comfortable with. But at some point, if you want to practice IBC the best, you have to get over the psychological problem, which is typically a fear of premium, fear of borrowing from the policy, fear of making loan repayments, you misclassify a lot of those terms, which I've talked about in podcasts previously, how to properly classify these transactions on the ba- on your balance sheet and income statement. So you kind of know what's, what's happening whenever you make these transactions. And the net effect of this is that they set out to solve a problem, but they never actually solved the problem because they just started a small, they, they solved it, you know, 25% of the problem by starting a small policy um, that, and that they never really grew up with. They're, they're still kind of a, a kid with it. Most people think their system is big enough as is, but that's because they're comparing it to a subconscious evaluation of how big their premium should be, (laughs) not based on how big their banking system should be. 
So a lot of people, they, they shortchange themselves. This is not the case for everybody, but a lot of people will shortchange th- themselves. They, they think their policy, their system is big enough as is. They have a lot of fears of premium, so they certainly wouldn't want to do more. But they think it's big enough as is because they're comparing it to what they think their premium should be, not, well, how big should my banking system really be to solve the problems that I have? This is why I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end here shortly, but this is essentially what I was getting at whenever I talked about who, it's super com- who is super compelled when they hear about IBC and who's not. And the people who are most compelled about IBC are the ones with big problems to solve. If you are somebody who is discontented with the the typical route of you know financial security and savings and investing strategy, which is mainly you know depend upon retirement programs and and nest eggs and building up a large and you building up a large pool of money in the stock market or whatever it is, just the typical route, and that's you're 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 doing it because that's what you're supposed to do, but you're a little bit discontented by it. IBC has always been to me the gateway drug into different financial uh, opportunities. So if you say, okay, I'm discontented. I'm not exactly happy with the direction that the typical retirement planning and wealth building you know, trajectory goes on, and I want to go bigger, faster, farther, better uh, in some way. Oftentimes, if you transition the flow of capital from those tools into a policy and you start generating capital here, you'll have this itch to deploy the money. And you'll start, you'll start seeking opportunities and opportunities will start seeking you because you are now building your life on a different set of uh, agenda, whether you started as a W-2 person or, or as an active investor or not, whether you started as an entrepreneur or not, no matter what, you can kind of gateway drug yourself into this world. There's so many stories of clients, which I need to have on this show. Um, speaking of that, if you are a client who's done some amazing things and you want to get on the show, you should email me. Nate at livingwealth.com. And what I meant was to say was we have so many clients who who heard about IBC, got involved with IBC, enjoyed IBC, and then started to you know fund a new business, invest in some new things, change their viewpoint, and suddenly they're like, I'm never going back to the old way of life. Either you immediately see your problem for capital because you're already an entrepreneur, you're already an active investor, and this becomes an awesome solution to that problem. Or if you're, you're not, maybe not there right now, but you kind of want to be there. IBC is such an awesome gateway to get you over there. So it's an awesome gateway to get you over there. So that's that's it, guys. I mean, fundamentally, infinite banking is just like everything in life, everything financially. The goal is really about solving a problem. I think you should address what problem we're solving. In the world of IBC, the problem is that the banks have, a, have created a monopoly on money. and They're making a killing off of us, whether you're mainly a depositor or whether you're mainly a borrower. <laughs> and so, if, by the way, if you're mainly a borrower, that just means you probably are broke you're borrowing money and you don't have any savings. So the best way is to change that. If you're if you aren't that and you're a depositor, you you got you're doing well, you're living on less than you make, you're storing up money, but the banks are making a killing off of it instead of taking the old way out, which is just okay, banks suck and I'm just going to set my money in retirement programs, I guess, whether I, whether you want to or not, you instead just simply become your own banker. That's the new solution that it's that it's solving for us. You may already have a desperate need for banking in which if you're an entrepreneur or active investor, a small business owner, something like that, then you'll you'll be able to rock and roll with this right away. If you're not, you'll be able to get there very easily by transitioning where you're putting money. I hope this has been helpful. Once again, this has been Dollars and Nonsense. If you follow the herd, you will get slaughtered. For free transcripts and resources, please visit livingwealth.com slash E211. Listener, one last thing before you go. Start your journey towards financial security and wealth today. Visit livingwealth.com slash escape the bank. Upon completing this course, you'll have all the information that you'll need to see if infinite banking is right for you. Again, go to livingwealth.com slash escape the bank.